to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they are open 24-7, serving hot, fresh food. Moan, greetings from New York. Uh, hello from Hendersonville. See? Same thing. <laughs> by the way, we hadn't mentioned it. May the 4th be with you. Oh, nice. Hey, nice. It is May the 4th. There we go, man. Star Wars Day. Yeah, it's a big deal. I've already seen Mark Hamill and Luke Skywalker and everybody all over social media. Oh, That's no. become a cool thing, though, hasn't it? It is. Social media does some cool things every once in a while. The celebration of this day has been cool. Siblings Day, seeing old like, like pictures of like your siblings is always cool. Uh, and then it's the other side that we don't like, DK. But yeah, May the 4th is pretty cool. <laughs> On today's program, we are going to talk about, if I can find it here, damn it, did I just ruin this whole intro? Oh, you did. It's always good. It's draft grade. It is draft grade. Why did you say it that? I was waiting on you to show everybody. I was waiting to let <laughs> you show everybody. You're not professional all the time. Sometimes <laughs> it's the athletes that are professional. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You just go right ahead and take this over. <laughs> so we've been asking. I brought it I'll up. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> you, it's it the is Ramon the Ramon show. Foster show, okay? <laughs> but what happened was we went through the discussion of uh, after the draft was complete, whether or not we would give a grade for it. I know some people like grades. Some people hate grades. I'm of the mindset that, look, we'll we'll get to the point when, when DK shows back up, but screw it. Um, we needed to talk about grades and how Cav did in his last draft class, the class of 2022. And when speaking of grades, of course, it's the initial shock of what it is. It's the initial, hey, how do you think we did? Did we fulfill our needs when it came down to sustaining a very good team? And I fell back from this draft after Kev and Coach Tomlin, the scouting department, Mr. Rooney, everybody was done with it. And I, I thought to myself, what grade would I give him? And again, this is just a preface of what the picks are, not necessarily what the performance is. I give this class with the guys they were able to get, the positions that we fulfilled, and what it means to the team. I gave it a, I gave it an A. Did you I, really? I did. I saw some groups give it a C. I've seen an A minus, which I don't understand A and A minus. Like it's either an A or A plus, but A minus, just give it a B plus if that's the case. Yeah, the minus designation next to the letter A always felt weird. You're going it's, back to school. Like, mm, wait, wait a so second. I, is it an A or is it not an A? Because A minus doesn't feel like an A. I know, just tell me B plus. I I feel better with a B plus. I, I could handle a B plus. But I can't so, handle A minus. Like, hang on a second. You're saying an A, but then you're slapping me across the face along the way. See what I'm saying? That's weird to me. I gave it an A because I, I, I of the quarterbacks and the way it fell throughout this draft, Kenny was clearly the best pick of them all, of, of, of at least this draft. He was the best pick. The next pick didn't come until 40 picks later, I think, with Ritter. I'm not sure on his number or when he was drafted, but it was a long time before another quarterback was selected, and there wasn't one in the first round. So you got to give him that. George Pickens. Just say the name. I think that's solid enough. Going across DeMarvin Leal, I don't think his position is going to be necessarily walking as a starter. He's coming in to be a depth guy, to be a youth guy, to be a guy that's going to be a, a, a to spare of that time. And you hope that he can produce and move forward with the way it goes. Calvin Austin in the third, very solid. You're adding speed. You're adding a kick returner. You're adding a guy that also, I brought this up with George Pickens, has an attitude about him. But I think you're getting a real dual threat when you're getting – Calvin Austin the third, Connor Hayward, he's Cam's brother. I think you understand what's that going to mean to him, considering the pride he's got to have to be on that team to be Cam's little brother. He's going to run into that so many different times, and I think it's going to be awesome to see what he's going to turn out into as far as carving his own way, the same way TJ did with JJ and the way Derek is trying to do with TJ in Pittsburgh. It is all competition for those guys. And it's also the fact, too, that I think you're getting a guy that's one going to play special teams, but he is an actual pass catcher. He's an actual offensive weapon when it yes, comes down to the way you're going to be able to so. use him. Those highlights, that's, those hands. He has the, hands, and I think reads. that's mm-hmm. separator when it comes down to, to to Derek Watt is we knew he was on roster, but you only saw him as a fullback, not as an offensive threat. So the way that shakes out at the end is going to be good, and again, as a different dynamic of competition also. And then Mark Robinson, of course, Definitely depth, special teams, and, and of course, Chris 
Ola Dun Dokun Dokun. Uh with the way the quarterbacks is gonna shake out, you might have a young guy who's depth at that position that can run scout team and do those things. So overall, you fulfill every need. I don't think this draft was a wasteful pick given whatsoever. Well, I, I don't I, I see where you're coming from. And and you've said ever since the weekend that you felt strongly about the fact that they went through it and checked off boxes, yeah. even though they say they don't do that. <laughs> and they wouldn't say that after the facts either. Uh, they're not going to say, well, we really needed this. And then we also needed this. And, but they invariably end up doing exactly what what this, you know, this situation played out. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still looking at this. Um, I, don't I gave feel, it a strong A. Yeah. It, I, 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 I want to hear that. yours. It's, it's a different type of draft. And I think you almost have to quanti- quantify how it is that you want to do the grading. Because if the grading is assessing or addressing needs, mm-hmm. then it's exactly what you said. Because they went down the list. What I've always valued the most in the Steelers drafts in past years is when they'll get some ceiling. They'll get guys that are really undersold by somebody else. Okay. Like a Lamar Woodley, who nobody saw coming. Okay. Uh, even Alex Highsmith out of Charlotte. That's true. Okay. And these are not, I'm dropping a couple of edge rushers here, but there's a lot more, uh, you know, that I could throw into this. And you, those are the Steelers at TJ Watt. My yeah. goodness, how did I forget him? Okay. That where you say, okay, this guy might not be this or that, but just wait, Deontay Johnson out of Toledo. Okay. And this draft to me felt more like exactly what you just described, which is we need this. So this, we need this. Yeah. So this, now that doesn't mean that these guys can't, won't get better or whatever else. Right. Here. right. So I, I'm not, you know, putting my own ceiling over them. I'm just saying that these guys, that this team in general tends to, when it, they're much better at drafting when they don't have needs, as yeah. is every team. Okay, does that make sense now? Yeah, oh, because 100%, then they can just yeah. go off the reservation and say, yeah, but this guy over here, we really like him. The way they said last year, they liked Isaiah Loudermilk. Yeah, for, for sure. And and again, like I said, I was giving it, I think you are too, given the grade just on the face value or what the picks are. I think Kenny, I mean, George Pickens, probably a first rounder if it's not for the ACL. And I think some people worry a little bit about his attitude and stuff like that. I, I, I agree with you. I, I legitimately think it was we got a need and we're taking. But this is the other part, too, DK. We're in the fresh era of the unknowns when it really comes down to the quarterback and this team, too. So I guess that's why they had to draft like that. Well, put it this way. Here's here's a different way of looking at it from that ceiling standpoint. If Kenny Pickett proves to be a number one quarterback in the National Football League, if George Pickens proves to be the number one wide receiver on your core, <laughs> none of the rest of this matters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you say, KF said? You needed three? He said three, but uh, this is quarterback and wide yeah. receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, so, with all due respect to all of the other players, <laughs> okay, that is that is one wonderful draft if it turns out to be that way. Uh, When we come back, more of the Ramon Foster Show. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Ramon, there's lots of different ways to look at this offense from the identity standpoint, mostly because it hasn't had one. It didn't have one in 2021, and it really can't have one right now. What would you want to see in, not OTAs or whatever, but when we get to real training camp, what would you want to see that would have you start saying to yourself, now here's an identity. Uh, here, this is what we can build on. Could it be decided instead of by quarterbacks and Najee Harris and whoever else, but instead by what they see from the offensive line? What if they say, look, our O-line is just feeling the run, man. Yep. Uh, that when you, when you brought that up, you know, as far as what is going to be the identity – I, it didn't really register until you say, you know, you know, we don't know. I think we went into the last what 
seven, eight years as, mm-hmm. as Steeler fans as player think, oh, we'll pass first offense, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that, that was true. And we did it very well. This is the first time because we don't know what Mitch is going to be able to do. Uh, Mason, uh, also Kenny, as far as that goes, too, about, OK, who's going to do what? Can they handle the passing game in the NFL as a number one QB one? Um, I, I think initially because it has to be established, DK, you got to run the ball. And you got to run the ball to make this quarterback, these quarterbacks, whoever they're going to be, very comfortable. You got to run the ball because why? This, this group of OL has to find a mesh point with one another also. That's what we had to do as a group. Like, we we really went into camp in our era when we started taking out me, Gil, Pounce, Dave, and Al. Like, it became a point where we practice is just going to be hell, y'all. That's just where we are. Every single day is going to be hell. Nine on seven. 11 on 11, tackling to the ground because if they hit our running backs too hard to create an attitude that made us want to go a little bit harder, you know what I'm saying, in practice. And it also, it made us establish, okay, it's going to look pretty with the way we're throwing the ball around the field. But if we punch in your mouth every single player, every four players, and we got something, you ask me, run a pass. The answer, I think, is it. the run has to be established first. Whether it's Mitch, whether it's Mason, or whether it's Kenny. As far as the starter goes, they have to get comfortable with knowing that they don't have to be Superman every single game. And that's what we've had with Ben. If the run game wasn't working, ah, screw it. Throw it. Yeah. Ben got it. Yeah, we have been here. Yeah, we're going to do that other thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I, I get a sense, and this is the usual post-draft uh, fan response, which is, that's it. We did it. Everything's solved. This is great. Mm-hmm. And and I had that sense about the offensive line yeah. from a lot of fans, boy, probably about a month ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was, well, you spent all this money. They're going to be great. James Daniels is here. Okay, great. Mason mm-hmm. Cole is here. Uh, Kemp Chooks, great. Um, no, they, they've they they've got to figure stuff out. They do. They, they have to come together. And I'll be honest, it's probably going to be a little tension. It's probably going to be a little, you know, like the, the competition. It'd be very, very shocking if if they're all kumbaya when camp kicks off because of the level of comp- competition that's about to be added in. So, like, it's about to get very serious. I, I We had somebody tweet at us uh, this morning, DK, saying the way you guys talked about camp makes me want to go to it for the first time. And I'm like, you should go, is what I told him. Because when you finally get the pads on, and I'll be honest, the focal point is going to be on the quarterbacks. But between this offensive line, like battle, as far as trying to establish starters, identity, it's going to be highly contested. Like, And by the way, the James Daniels signing, I think it's been underreported. That is a huge pickup man and i know you've covered it and we spoke about it i just had to emphasize that this kid was highly coveted the deal that he got was a kevin colbert type of deal where you're like how the hell did you sign him for that because there was a lot of other teams that was in the sweepstakes for a guy like him and i'm glad he chose pittsburgh and i'm glad to be watching him coming soon and it's just gonna push dotson it's gonna push all of those dudes to get better like those young guys really gotta push the envelope so that way you get depth at that position too or across the line yeah i'm hoping you can keep talking because i got all these sirens blaring <laughs> always <laughs> man manhattan. but <laughs> it, it wouldn't I, be manhattan without them right it wouldn't be man but hopefully <laughs> that's what we see on game day when it comes down to this uh this offense though is sirens being brought out for them just mowing folks nice. down i'm, I'm all that. about violence when it comes to playing football Ooh, because it's, it's exactly there. that I'm a, I, I think I'm a nice guy, DK, but I know I'm a a hole on the field. So much so I'm that, man, uh, Kalecio Simile. Uh, I had a buddy of mine that was kicking it with him. He was like, FaceTime Ramon. I was like, I missed the call that used to play with Baltimore, remember? I missed mm-hmm. the call. And he texted me, was like, Man, I'm here with Kalecio Simile. He wants to talk to you. I'm like, I don't personally know him, you know? And um, I saw so I FaceTime him back. And he was like, Man, he told me he knew you, and I just had to say what's up to you. And I just had to tell you, I really loved the way you played. He's like, I know I played in Baltimore, and you played in Pittsburgh. He was like, well, I used to just watch you and just tell them dudes, y'all can't beat him, and look how you dog and take care of your teammates and stuff. Wow. And I was just like, that's this really is cool, a dude. That I like, I like. He killed it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was as a player. That's what you want. And I'm hoping this new group 
Whatever they decide to put on tape when we start talking about this offense in general, I'm hoping that O-line has your divisional rival saying, we got to be like that. That's good stuff. Wait till everybody hears our Hey Moan segment today. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's time for our Hey Moan segment. And this one comes from Serbia. This is my ancestral homeland. I'm born and raised uh, in Pittsburgh and, and proud of that. Also proud of my heritage. And it comes from Dimitri Marjanovic, who says, Hey Moan, I'm here writing from the land of DK's forefathers. So he just may be able to pronounce my name. Dude. Dimitri Marjanovic. I mean, what did you want from me? This is like this is like Joe Smith, right? <laughs> Dimitri Marjanovic. If I was okay, my question regards your experience as the Steelers player representative. Why does the Players Association insist on fewer practices in general and fewer padded practices in particular when negotiating new CBAs. I understand why owners would be happy with it. Less contact football means worse tackling, means more offense, means more money. But why do the players want it? I get that it's difficult and strenuous, but don't they realize that by practicing tackle football that it makes them better tacklers and it's safer for them? Awesome question. Very, Isn't that that's exactly really what asking. you would expect from Serbia, right? <laughs> go ahead and pat yourself on the back. There we go. Um, but awesome question. So it's two groups that love it: players and owners. The ones that hate it, coaches. All coaches want to do is coach. Okay, they won't fill time all the time. So the reason we ask for time off is football is like you said, it's, it's very taxing. Dimitri, like it, it really is. And the amount of time that if you give football coaches, specifically football coaches, the more time you get them, the low, the more they're going to ask for and take. Also, the biggest thing that an NFL player can have, especially when you play in a physical game, is rest. The quicker I can get back to recovery so that I can perform as, as best I can, it's the best it's the best thing for me and this sport in general, I think. I'll be I'll push back a little bit to you too. I don't think the game has gotten less physical. I think the rules have kind of protected certain players and positions to where calls are called very quicker or called quicker. I don't think the game in itself has gotten softer. When we ask for days off, it's because it can become very repetitive of the things you're doing. Why do I have to go nine on seven full contact to the ground every single day when it, there is no proof that is actually helping the tackling process? Like tackling becomes a man to a man type of thing. It's not necessarily a team thing. It's a person to person situation. You've heard Coach Tomlin in the past call out certain guys for not being physical. That's that person guy. That doesn't mean the next 10 people on the field aren't as physical. So that's the, the that, that's my pushback as far as saying the game hadn't gotten uh, has gotten softer. I don't think that. Ask the guys that are going out there every single day. They will tell you, no, nah, I'm giving it in, all every single play. In fairness, you're describing line play. You're describing No, no, I'm speaking play. all play. Well, Mike Mitchell would argue with you. But, well, that's because Mike Mitchell like to go take people's heads off. Again, that is a rules <laughs> okay, thing. Okay, and Ryan That's Clark not a physicality thing. Would take people's heads off, too. And but safety play has changed a, a lot. The physical. They're not going for the big... Uh, what did... Uh, what did... Uh, uh, Chris Berman and uh, and Tom Jackson used to call that Jack Jack up, up. but it still Jack <laughs> up. It still happens though. Not like the they, show, no, not the show they because they're not trying to. Yeah, they're, CTE. Yeah. They're like uh, X nay on the. On they, the they're up. not trying to promote it. That's the issue. It's still there though. Like I, I do think it's wrong for a guy to go clean up a guy blindly like that. To me, that's. I get the shot to where you, oh, I owned you. It's a primal type of sport, but it's also, it's got to have guidelines behind it. Like, it, it, it's, I feel the same way about hitting somebody super low. Ask Cincinnati about that. You know, like, that's that's a part of it, too. So, the reason we ask for time, perseverance, perseverance, per, yeah, perseverance, so you can preserve ourselves. The more I can do that, the longer I can potentially stay in this league also. And also, if it comes down to me making a play or not making a play because I'm not physical, you're going to get fired more times than not. The only people that just like the less time on the field is the coaches. And you know how we know that in Pittsburgh? Tell us. 
Because the head coach says it out yes, loud. Yes, he does. <laughs> he does. Those decisions are made without coaches in the room. No, nope. that is a that that's is a, not NFL competition committee stuff. That no, is, that's CBA. That is negotiated at the labor level. But but I'll, I'll forever push back and say that the game isn't soft. I'll forever push back and say the rules have been changed a little bit more to where you tap a quarterback's helmet that's 10, 15 yards. You know, like it wasn't that way. I I I think that aspect of it doesn't necessarily have to deal with the play in between the lines. We've seen guys get cleaned up all the time. The quarterbacks are protected and the blind, and I'll call them idiotic shots that folks make. Those are the ones that have changed the game. Less time on the field. It's if if we were to have it the way the coaches act, we would be out there from 7.30 till about 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, I think that it's funny. It, it, yesterday, you were on a little bit of a roll there about Latrobe and everything. And I was going to interject a couple of times, and I just stayed out. You should about have. How, well, I, the, no, you were, really, you were really moving there. And it is the Ramon Foster Show. <laughs> and at 2.55 p.m. every day. Yeah was not a joyful experience no. okay but it was especially less joyful whenever tomlin used to have as coaches were allowed to have say it with me two a days two, two a days and i okay. did two a days old school two a days mm-hmm. and it was it was get up be ready by like 8 30 on the field and this is the grounds probably weren't the greatest because it's, it's wet and slippery from yes. the dew and stuff Ooh, like that yeah. We get an hour 45 in the morning. And that one's just straight banging. Okay. That one is young guys. Let's, hey, let's go. Let's see what you're made of. Break. And then we're back out there at 255, DK. Now you got to ask yourself, how much better or worse did you get from those times right there? And if you ask any, I'm talking about go ask the, the, the Admiral himself, mean Joe Green, the five star general. How productive were the two a days for you? And most of them will tell you, if I could have did one, I would have. I'm interjecting that I think he would say that. Most of the players I've talked to that played before us, they feel those type of ways where you guys, hey, if you can extend your career as much as you can, do that. Yeah, that's, you know, you want to be in concert with your players to some extent. You also want to make them better and you also want to make the right evaluations. But the other thing that I'll throw out, this is more from the reporter's standpoint, is that I know that we were a lot busier covering and tracking injuries when there were more practices. There we go. And that used to be a real subject every year at training camp. And it, it, preseason is different. Preseason, you're playing football. you got to play football. Right, right, of okay. course. Games. Like, even when Dave got hurt in that preseason mm-hmm. game up in, I think it was in Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there was nothing you could do. It was just some innocuous looking thing. I believe he was in the end zone for some reason. Yeah. And s- something went wrong and there he went. But when you're talking about practices, these, you know, these are avoidable. Uh, when you're talking about the Oklahoma drills. Oh, man. Uh, I, I did those yeah. too. Do you get a better evaluation of the players? Sure. Are you going to really screw one or two of them up? Maybe. Probably. Okay. And is that, you know, the the amount of work that can be done is still getting done within those three hours that they're on the practice field. No doubt about that. And and this is the other part too, where the way the game has evolved in the athlete also, I think you guys would agree, DK, you paid attention a lot longer than I have. Uh, But the athlete has gotten bigger. They've gotten faster. They've gotten stronger. The game itself has gotten faster. The game itself has gotten way beyond anything we would have thought athletes being able to do. The best part of it to me is you get a chance to get guys the mental aspect of the game. You got to think about the time in which guys started playing football. I started playing football in in, uh, in the sixth grade, going into my seventh grade year. Just age myself real quick. You'll call me young as hell regardless, DK. But that's from 1997 all the way to 2020. That's football every single year for me. So when I get to the the last elite level of the NFL and I got to go back and repeat the same things I was doing in high school, or maybe I shouldn't be at that damn level anyway. It's almost at a point where it's like either you are or you're not. When it comes down to can you sustain in the NFL, no amount of time is going to get it get you to the point to where it's going to make you that much better or physical. It's either it's a will thing at that point. And just full disclosure, 
Troy, even when I first came into the league, was a guy. You know this. That's why you're laughing, DK. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Troy hardly practiced. Uh, Troy. <laughs> but who was the most menacing person on that defense? And energetic and in shape and everything else. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about a gold jacket here. We are talking about a gold jacket, though. They can always be an exception. Just an outstanding question from it was. Dimitri Marianovich. Dimitri Marianovich. How did he put it? The land of my forefathers. The land of your forefathers. Good father. stuff. Yeah. Hey, yeah. one thing. When you're sending in these hey moans, uh, whether they're fun, whether they're about his rookie card, stuff that we had <laughs> earlier this week, the only thing we would encourage is – Use your imagination. This is really good stuff. It makes the show better. Yeah, it does. Uh, and that's on that's on you, uh, who's watching or listening to this. And that's you know that we've had some terrific hey moans, and, and not have. just like you know what you what do you think of this? You know, it's you know no. come up with something good. Is what we're saying. We we'll appreciate them all too. And then there's that as well. <laughs> anyway, let's do another one of these tomorrow. By the way. I, I have to say this before we go. Go to, ahead. Go ahead. Moan had the greatest transition in Ramon <laughs> Foster show history today. The sirens are going off outside here. And he comes back with how he comes back with how uh, he at some points in his career, he chose violence. And yeah. there are going to be repercussions for that. And it's just like like this, you know. This is why you pay all this money to see you don't pay any money to see the show. <laughs> yeah, DK, hey, some might call me a, a light pro, man. I don't know what it is. Just call me something. There you go. Let's call. I'll call you again tomorrow. How about that? Let's do it. All right. Bye. <laughs>